BJ, let's get into uh, some of the listeners' questions. So we've had a few questions sent our way via Facebook, via Twitter. Um, and, uh, of course, if you want to send uh, questions to be answered on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast, you can do either uh, visit our uh, Facebook community page, just uh, search Wrestling with Jonas, and that's Jonas spelled J-O-H-N-E-R-S, or go to at with Jonas underscore pod on Twitter and drop us a DM, slide into our DMs. I've always wanted to say that. Uh, but, uh, but but you can do, and we normally put out a post uh, on, on a, way, a Thursday or a Friday asking for questions for the Saturday recording, and we've got a few here from some of our followers. Uh, so the first question, then BJ from from Ashley Clements now um, quite topical because it's uh, with regards to the debutantes on AEW Dynamite this week. Ashley asks which out of the two debuts on AEW was uh, was best uh, received um, and uh, would Matt Hardy uh, have been better saved for a crowd interaction with the delete chance so I think to answer the second part of this question I think yes it, it's uh, a given really that it would have been so much better so much more impactful um, if he had been unveiled in front of a crowd or the delete chance and the pop and the oh my gods and the holy shits um, but um, what's your opinion on who had the, the most uh, impact um, with, with their debut this week, would it have been Brody Lee or would it have been Matt Hardy? Um, who do you think uh, was was kind of best received or had the most impact uh, from this week? Oh, Matt Hardy hands down had the best impact. Whether it would have been better save for a crowd, I'm yes and no. I mean, it really worked that it was done in front of no crowd because it just added that, especially with the music playing in the background. Yeah, the piano the music. Of the music. But yeah, having as you said, having the delete chance and the crowd going wild, it would have made you wonder what would have been. I'll actually add to that question for you. What what would have been the better debut, Matt uh, Hardy debuting to the delete chance on AEW, or WrestleMania that Hardy's debuting to the delete chance there in 2016? Wow, there you go, there you go. I mean, the, the pop they got in uh, 2016. Was is still, I think, acknowledged as one of the the, the loudest uh, crowd pops at any WrestleMania. So that's going to be hard to beat. But I get I get what you're saying. I think that had there been a, a a crowd there of a few thousands, you know, five, six, up to ten thousand, however many they they fit into their arenas for Dynamite nowadays, I think they would have gone wild for Matt Hardy and the delete chance. But um, I mean, I'm I'm going to have a add a slightly different spin onto it. I thought. That Brody Lee had uh, the more impactful uh, debut this week over Matt Hardy for one simple reason. And we've seen Matt Hardy a lot on social media. We've seen Matt Hardy a lot on his YouTube channel, Free the Delete. And the last couple of episodes of Free the Delete, it's had the Young Bucks on there. So that's kind of almost let the cat out of the bag nice and early, almost giving away the fact that he's joined AEW and that he's going to be part of AEW and maybe involved with the elite somewhere uh, on the program in which he was when he appeared this Wednesday. Brody Lee, uh, Luke Harper, uh, we there was lots of rumours and unconfirmed reports that he had been signed with AEW, but they did a very good job at keeping it on the on kind of the down low. And uh, when he when he kind of finally materialised as the exalted one, uh, I, I thought that was. Uh, a little bit unexpected because we was, you know, possibly expecting Matt Hardy to be the exalted one, or maybe somebody else. Maybe a Christopher Daniels was throwing us a, a swerve all all the way through, or maybe it could be somebody like a Raven. Um, could have been anybody, to be honest with you. It could have been Eva Luna all, all along, all this time. But it was Luke Harper, and I think that was one that was a bit more of a mystery. So for me, um, in, in my opinion, I think um, Brody Lee had the kind of more impactful debut. But uh, different opinions there, which is what what's good about wrestling. But um, yeah, I thought the cat was lit out of the bag with Matt Hardy and his uh, uh, free the delete and the, the Bucks being on a couple of episodes there, always giving it away. But let's move to the second question from Jason Hall. Now, a bit of fantasy booking on the line here, BJ. So put your, your booker's hat on for a second. And he asks uh, the Rockers versus Edge and Christian versus the Hardys versus the Young Bucks versus Motor Sh- City Machine Guns versus the Dudleys in a TLC match. Who goes over? Um, so what's that? One, two, three, four, five, a six team TLC match. Um, some old, some new teams, uh, the Rockers, Edge and Christie and the Hardys, Young Bucks, Motor City, Machine Gun and the Dudleys. My opinion, oh, 
I, oh crikey this is a tough one because i'm a fan of all of these guys um all but right. it's, it's, I, I i i'm gonna go for the dudleys because i thought the dudleys were the uh, unsung heroes of them tlc matches now edge and christian won all three of them if i'm not mistaken uh certainly the one at SummerSlam and the two at wrestlemania um they won all three of them but i thought the dudleys were the unsung heroes so i would put the dudleys over in their prime um but i've got to say see i would love to have seen the rockers in a tlc match that would have been pretty amazing uh most city machine guns as well the young bucks we've seen them in similar matches um uh, certainly for uh, ring of honor and uh, and uh, aw but uh yeah i'm going with the dudleys on this one but what about yourself bj well i want to before we answer that answer that question i want to elaborate on it and are we going to book it as the rockers as they are now, are we going to book at the rockers from the 1980s? Are oh, it's got to be, off? yeah, it's got to be Janetti and Shawn Michaels, definitely. Yes, yeah, so are we going to have like Janetti and Shawn Michaels as they are now? Like, oh, 50 oh no, no, no. Michaels? So you got to you got to take it as if this was them in their prime. So if we could put them all into a time machine and bring them out mm-hmm. at the same time uh, when they're all in their prime. Uh, so yeah, Edge and Christian when they were in their prime, uh, Hardys as they are now, you could say. Uh, well, the Hardys when they were in their prime, the Young Bucks as they are now, Motor City Machine Gun when they were around, the Dudleys. I uh, don't think they'd be able to uh, pull off a TLC match uh, nowadays. But yeah, when they're in their prime. So uh, how how do you think this will this will go down? Uh, it's. <sighs> It's a really hard one to book because, I mean, obviously, Edge and Christian have gone over in all three. The Young Bucks went over when they had a TLC match in 2016 against the Hardys. Yeah. I've grown up a Jeff Hardy fan. I am a huge Jeff Hardy fan, especially from his 2002 era when he came out and he had all that neon paint on him to when he had that new music in about 2008, 2009 with all the face paint. It's when he had Willow in TNA. I've loved, I've loved watching Jeff Hardy for as long as I can remember. If it's not him, it's the Hurricane. And I don't know. I'm, I'd almost put over the um, Motor City Machine Guns. Yep. Just yep. to go with the aspect of they'd probably be going into that match as the underdogs. Like you've got Edge and Christian, the Hardys, and the Dudley Boys who specialize in that kind of match. And then you've got the Young Bucks who are considered the best tag team in the world. You've got Shawn Michaels in the Rockets who's known as the Showstopper. Oh, yeah. So I'd almost go the Murder City Machine Guns because they're, what are they? That's Alex Shelley and Chris Sabian? Correct. Yeah, so I'd probably put them over as the underdogs who are the last people you'd expect to win it. I like your thinking. I do like your thinking, most definitely. But I've got a soft spot for the Dudleys because I followed them all the way back in the original ECW from the early to mid 90s and uh, followed their career through ECW and through um, WWE, of course, and wherever else they've been. But uh, yeah, so uh, very, very interesting question there from, from Jason Hall and some excellent teams there to pick amongst and uh yeah kind of uh, testing our, our bookers hats but another question from podmania pro wrestling podcast via twitter they asks what uh, is mine and what is our main event for wrestlemania so we know what the main events are going to be we know what the matches are for this year's wrestlemania but if we could fantasy book our kind of dream wrestlemania main events what would it be now i was giving this a bit of thought and I- i've got to kind of think to my favorite wrestlers now and possibly my favorite wrestlers of all time and they're two uh wrestlers that are still active nowadays and we saw a glimpse of what this match could be uh on a smackdown um back in october last year i think when the, the most of the wwe roster was stranded over in saudi arabia and we saw a glimpse a very very good match of adam cole versus daniel bryan now if ever we get to see get a chance to see those two in a mania match with a championship on the line, that would be a dream WrestleMania main event for me. Adam Cole versus Daniel Bryan. Put the WWE title on the line. Give them 30 minutes. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a match of a lifetime. 
And for me, that would be the ultimate WrestleMania main event, in my opinion. Um, but what about yourself, BJ? Uh, any, any thoughts on uh, who you might book if you had the opportunity to who you would put in that main event spot in your very own WrestleMania main event? Well, based off the matches that we've got, obviously, like you've got Roman Reigns versus Goldberg and Roman's put up two nights of WrestleMania. WWE's biggest event just got bigger. One of those nights belongs to the big dog. Who's going to claim the other? And then, obviously, that was retweeted by um, Adam Copeland, also known as Edge, which I found actually quite interesting. And he's like, oh, that's cute, big pop. But what you realise it, or, or whether you realise it or not, Randy Orton has, if he has the nerves to accept my challenge for WrestleMania, they've marked their territory of, on what the real main event is. And after nine years, the wolf is back in his yard. I'm just like, okay, I'm hyped up. Just that one tweet has hyped me up for that match. But if I could fantasy book a match, I think Daniel Bryan versus Adam Cole, like you said, that would be a dream match for anyone. And we saw a um, glimpse of that on SmackDown. If they got even more time, because when they went into that episode of SmackDown, Daniel Bryan wanted Adam Cole, but he also asked for an hour and if they could get that hour even add Drew Gulak into that match and make it a triple threat oh my god it's like get the tissues out that match is going to be orgasmic yeah yeah but uh, I think we're both in agreement. If, if somewhere, I mean, Daniel Bryan would, would love to have another match with Adam Cole. I'm sure on a bigger stage than just a, a SmackDown, as, as good as that match was. But uh, yeah, give them an hour on any show, and I'll be all over it. But uh, some really good questions there from Ashley Clements, uh, Jason Hall, and Pod Mania podcast. And uh, thank you. And like I say, if you want to get in touch, if you want to send us uh, questions for future episodes of the Wrestling with Johnners podcast for us to answer, myself and my guests will uh, do our best and just uh, get in touch, DM us. And- with Jonas underscore pod or via our Facebook community page just search wrestling with Jonas. 